My name is Tomomi Mura, and today I'm going to talk about my little Raspberry Pi project called KittyCamJS. So it's a little bit about myself. So again, yeah, as I'm just introduced, I, am, I flew from San Francisco, and I'm a front-end person, and I claim myself as an open web and open tech advocate. And although today I'm going to talk about Raspberry Pi and stuff, I am actually quite newbie in the hardware field. So I'm not here to represent myself as a hardware expert. I'm here to share you know, my experience with hardware and Node.js. And as a day job, uh, I am a senior developer advocate at a company called Nexmo. I'm going to mention about a little bit later again. And I am a cat lady of interweb. Well, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so this is a photo I took at the Maker Faire a few years in back. So Megafair has been around over 10 years, at least in Bay Area, you know, and San Francisco area. But I think it's been a global event. You know, it's, it's been happening all over the world now. And again, I was actually born and grown up in Japan, where the gender, gender gap is quite huge. You know, it's larger than here in Europe, or even in the United States, where I live now. So I wasn't quite encouraged you know, any boy things, like robotics and such. But so when I first time I visited, you know, Maker Faire, I was like, wow, that's so cool, you know, those robots and mechanics, and, you know, I really wanted to do something. And especially when I see things like this, it doesn't look awfully too complicated. So I'm like, yeah, I want to make something like this. You know, I've been always a crafty kid. I can sew, I can knit, I can do many things, but I haven't really wired in my whole life, and I want to do something. Especially when I see something like Arduino. Actually, maybe it's called the Genuino here. Maybe some, there was some legal dispute about naming stuff, but it, I still call it Arduino, its original name. And this is a you know, microcontroller-based kit, and it's open source. You know? What I mean by open source, it's like software, IDE, it's all free, and you can do all kind of stuff. And the uh, coolest thing about Arduino was that this was the first developer-friendly board. So somebody like me who never really have any you know, formal experience or education with um, you know, mechanical engineering, you know, this is so friendly enough that I could even get started easily. So I tried. I can just use a sample code, you know, flash my device with a sample code. Cool. But the thing is, the language used for the Arduino is called the Sketch. And uh, this is something loosely based on C. And I'm like, see, I'm not sure about this because I didn't really, you know, I never really learned how to code in C. So I can flash my Arduino device with sample code, but I couldn't really do much by myself. Maybe I can tweak some code. I can guess, you know, I can act like as if I know what I'm doing, but not really, right? It's not really something I wanted to do. So I kind of forgot about it. I just gave up. And then later on, I saw Raspberry Pi. This is another thing. It's different from Arduino. It's actual computer, and it comes with you know, um, CPU and GPU and all those. And you can run Linux, like Raspbian OS, or if you want, you can have like Windows 10 for Raspberry Pi. So there are more languages of choices, not just C and stuff. C++. And plus plus. You can use Python and other stuff, too. So I've tried with Python for a while. But the thing is, um, I'm being always a front-end engineer. And uh, the language I'm mostly you know, comfortable dealing with is JavaScript. So I always wanted to use JavaScript. So I'm like, why not? Then I met Johnny5. That's a JavaScript robotics framework. And uh, yeah, it's really cool stuff as it sounds. You know, and it works with Arduino and uh, Arduino compatible boards. And when you use in IO plugins, uh, you can use for Raspberry Pi and other platforms as well. So that's really awesome stuff. So if you want to find out more about it, just uh, go check it out at uh, johnny-5.io. So yeah, so now I can use JavaScript with Arduino, and Raspberry Pi, whatever, you know. That's pretty cool. So I told myself all those, you know, electronics, like electrical engineering 101, which first I tried blinking LED, like everybody does. It's a hello world of hardware, right? So 
I told myself when I got along, you know, how to use breadboard and how to wire properly, how to use, you know, resistance, how to calculate resistance and all those. And I did all those. Then later on, I wanted to do something little more than just blinking LED. So I just came up with this something called a kitty cam. It's a Raspberry Pi camera with cat facial detection. Like, I'm serious about that. <laughs> so in the hardware part, I use Raspberry Pi. And uh, I initially started this project like sometimes last year. So I use a uh, Pi 2. Later on, I upgraded in Raspberry Pi 3. And a camera module and a PIR sensor. And uh, well, I'll talk more about later. But and software is um, I'm using Node.js with Johnny 5 and some more open source stuff. So yeah, this is basically how it works. I got Pi, I got camera module, and this little weird things in the middle is a motion sensor. And I set it up um, in front of cat food. Actually, I have a real thing here. So I have this Lego case, but this is what it is. And uh, I set this right by cat food. So whenever my cat is around and eating cat food, this motion sensor right here, is, it triggers it and takes photos. So yeah, again, this is what it is. So detecting the motion, it takes photo, then uh, it goes, uh, goes through um, image processing to see if cat is present in a photo. And if the cat is in a photo, send it in the cloud, otherwise just dump it. And I just stream these photos on web browser and I even send an SMS to my phone. <laughs> I know it's overkill, but it's fun. <laughs> so this is actual video I created. It's kind of crappy video, but. So this featured my kitty, Jamie. He's a home alone in San Francisco by himself. Oh, good kitty. <laughs> so yeah, cat's detected. And I send him in SMS. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, I wish I could demo right here, but you know, my cat doesn't want to come here with me, so I can't demo. <laughs> so there, the hardware I used, a Pi and motion sensor and camera module and just wires. So again, this it's a picture of the, my Pi is a case when it's open up. This is how it looked like. So I didn't even have to bother soldering anything or even breadboard because I'm just using um, wires, the female female jump wires directly to um, motion sensor to the GPIO pins and the Raspberry Pi. So if you look at this uh, picture here, there are three wires connected to this, um, I don't know, yeah, here. So the red wire is going into power and the black one goes in the ground and the middle one, the brown wire in the picture, is a data. So data sent from this uh, motion sensor that goes to a Raspberry Pi by uh, um, GPIO pins. It means it's a general purpose input output. Yeah. So um, this motion sensor is not that smart. It's really piece, you know, it's really cheap piece of hardware. So it detects only motion is detected or not. It's like a boolean. It's not like it tells the proximity to the object, because if you want to know how far or how close the object to the sensor, you need to get something else like ultra uh, sonic sensor, I mean, sonar or something. So when you're programming in Spy, well, I'm talking about when you have installed a Raspbian OS, which is Linux-based, or Debian um, variants, actually. Uh, you get a Python and Scratch for beginners and Java. Ruby, and such such. But of course, you can install Node.js. It doesn't come with, but you can. And especially when I started this project, uh, it wasn't available, so I have to install in a different way. But now Node.js.org uh, officially supports that. So when you go to Node.js.org slash download and scroll a little bit down, uh, you will notice something called additional platforms. And here's uh, ARM binaries here. I'm using ARM7, but I think the V8 works fine. So just download that. So you can pretty much just get into, oh yeah. 
So this screenshot is actually uh, taken directly from Raspberry Pi. So everything's running on Pi. So you can just open up terminal in Raspberry Pi, and you can just uh, download and install Node.js quite um, simple, easily. So again, this is how you know, uh, my hardware software works. And the software tech stack I've used is uh, Johnny 5 first, so detecting motion using Johnny 5's IR motion object. And uh, taking photos using Raspberry Still, which is a command line tool that comes with a camera module for Raspberry Pi. And I'm using Kiridar to detect um, cat face, you know, cat facial detection. And I send in a photo to Cladinary because it has a really easy to use Node.js library. And I'm using publishing, subscribing, and that URL to uh, display on the web. So basically just streaming it uh, using PubNub. It's a company I used to work at. And uh, finally, I'm sending message, SMS messages using Nexmo. So that's a diagram I tried to come up with. The whole software works, but it's not really nice. It's kind of messy. <laughs> anyway, so now I, um, I'd like to show some of the code samples. I mean, the code snippets I've actually used for this KitKam. So initially, um, using Johnny 5, requiring Johnny 5, just npm install Johnny 5. And at the same time, I need Raspberry I.O which is an I.O. plugin for the Johnny 5 for Raspberry Pi, so I need that. So when you instantiate in this uh, Johnny 5's border object, uh, you need to specify this for Raspberry Pi. And uh, yes, yeah, so when the border is ready, do some action. So in this case, when the border is ready, I am uh, using this motion sensor here. So if motion, or action in this case, and when border is ready, um, I'm initializing the motion sensor here, and it has a 5 motion, a PI7, uh, which is actually GPIO pin number I was referring earlier, because the data is coming from middle pin of this uh, motion sensor, so the pin is connected to Raspberry Pi's um, GPIO pin 7, actually GPIO 4. Raspberry Pi has a two different naming convention for pins, so it's kind of confusing, but uh, I'm using one of those. And I'm using Raspberry Still command line. So when you got a terminal, you can just type in Raspberry Still and give some arguments, and you can take a photo and store it somewhere in a pie. So um, to do this, to use this a um, command line with my software with Node.js, I'm using child process and spawn method. So this, this method spawns a new process with a given shell command, so you can just use Raspberry Still command there with some argument. So now here I'm giving a dimension of this image and image I mean, file name. So you notice I'm using kind of small dimension, like 320 by 240, it's tiny. The reason is because I have to go through image processing later, which is kind of expensive operation, and the Raspberry Pi is such a small computer, so I kind of went through um, you know, trial and error and tried to figure out you know, what, what is the optimum image size was. It could have been bigger with Pi 3, but I just stick with this size. And here's a processing image. So the processing image, like again, this is an expensive operation, so I tried to, I can't really have everything in a single process. Like, uh, so I'm just using another child process. This time I'm using a fork method to just dump in a whole other operation to a new, you know, another worker, which is running a new instance of VA engine here. So I'm just having, you know, running another JavaScript file with another process here. Otherwise, you know, because every time my cat is moving around in front of a camera, my pie keep taking photos it's so quick, right? And I can't just, you know, catch up. The image processing takes so long, so it just can't catch up each time. So if you, you know, try to do everything the same process, it really just stops right there. It doesn't do any. So I just decide to separate it, you know, each process. So when uh, everything's done, let's say if image processing is done, it came back to this, um, and the fork on message, when it's done, I'm sending this image as a base64 to the Cloudinary. So this is another uh, JavaScript, you know, uh, being processed, I mean, 
running in a different process here. So I'm using Canvas here because that's what a kitty dog uses to detect if the cat is in the photo. So the Canvas, uh, let me see. All right, so yes. So in the Canvas, yeah, many times, like again, um, I can use the two data URL method so I can just convert it as a base64. So it's easy to process with uh, you know, uh, the third party uh, APIs for you know, just uh, sending the photos to cloud. So this is what I'm doing. So yeah, I want to explain a little bit about KDDAR. So this is what I'm using for the processing image to see if cat it is in the photo or cat or cats. So this is an open source JavaScript facial detection, like it really seriously <laughs> exists. And that takes a canvas object and calculate location of the cats in the image. So API itself is quite easy to use. And this is so cool, I wish I wrote this um, an API. So the, how it works is that it chops up the image into many windows, like many different windows, and extracting data by and taking a set of gradient to dark to light and try to find some edges of the image, or cat in this case, and compare the direction of those edges to an edges find on known cat images. And this entire thing is actually used a neural network and you know, there was a talk earlier today by Oliver, and that was really fascinating things, you know, you doing this machine learning with JavaScript. In that case, you know, he was showing this uh, chihuahua or muffin kind of detection. So this is a similar thing, so using, you know, detecting cats instead. So this is what I was saying, I'm finding the edge of the image. So that cat in the left uh, can be uh, defined with you know, edges in these photos on the right-hand side. And uh, this image I actually use in this slide is borrowed from Microsoft Research. So the KDDA itself is using the concept from Microsoft. And uh, I find it's really cool that company, you know, has a people, group of people working on this kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> just finding cats and photos. I thought it was pretty cool. And, uh, it's funny. So we often say cat has nine lives, but Microsoft guys have defined cats by nine points. So each point is representing like a pointy ear and distance of eyes and nose and such. So that data sequence can be, uh, it's always somehow started from nine, but next one is coordinate for uh, left eye, right eye, and X and, X and Y, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so this kitty photo in the left can be translated as, not translated, but can be defined as those nine points. Yeah, you see more than nine numbers because it's, you know, each has X and Y. So they are actual photos of cats. They used to pre-train this kitty doll. So like, again, this neural network is working with a, no, you know, a feeding, with a known pictures, known cat photos, and a negative one is you know, known cat object or other animal. So they get a bunch of JSON data of all those. So when they get new photo, new set of photo, it analyzes it and compared with the existing uh, cat photos. In this case, when they see the software sees the photos from Raspberry Pi, it's Jamie's picture, and it compared with the or I mean the existing. Um, JSON to see if that's a cat or not. So that's pretty smart. So anyway, so once a cat is detected from the photos, I'm sending that to the cladinary. Again, I'm using Base64 to upload it. And at the same time, I'm using the URL of cladinary to stream the photos on web browser. So that's actually a screenshot of that, what it is. And I have actually a recent photos. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, so that's actual photos of my kitties. <laughs> Some of the photos showing like a uh, negative, I mean the false positives, it's not really cat. You know what, and the funny ones, these are my pictures. I, 
I don't know. The software thinks I'm the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So maybe I have to really train this software. It's a better photo, it's not my photo. <laughs> so and uh, that also at the same time, uh, I'm sending SMS using Nexmos API. Oh, it's because I work at a company. I started working at a company uh, about the three months ago, and they um, well, now it's just that we uh, provide APIs for SMS and IP messages, and it's quite easy to use. So the number there is actually not my number. It's just a virtual number to send an SMS from and to my mobile phone here. So each time, you know, my Raspberry Pi detected my cat photos, yeah, I'm sending messages. So there are some of my favorite photos. And the last one there is actually I've done this uh, demo, like a live demo on live TV, which totally freaked me out because live demo usually fails, right? And I was on live TV show to do that, but well, fortunately, it was successfully working fine. So that was pretty cool, actually. So this is QA team. <laughs> my project could not be done with my awesome QA team. <laughs> So the lead kid is my kitty, Jamie, and uh, Ginger and Basil, my friend's cat. And actually, Alice and Yugi is a German kitties. Their owners are from here, and especially one of the owners <laughs> is from Munich. <laughs> so she told me all about yummy pretzels. <laughs> and uh, the Venom is the only kitty with a Twitter handle. Uh, Venom is actually a TV show cat. And Ozzy, he's a dog. <laughs> he helped me to see it in you know, negative control, like if that detects a dog or not. And yes, it does not detect dogs, so it was working as we expect. <laughs> so yes, um, the whole project is actually available on GitHub. So if you are interested, please do check that out. Actually, I got so many stars for this project. It's my most popular repo. Yeah. So next step will be I want to update hardware, software, some of the stuff I've already done. Maybe in the future, I want to use RFID, which, you know, scan the credit card and stuff, but also that scans cat microchips. So currently, I have only one cat at home, but I'm thinking about adapting another kitty, so I might want to identify which cat. <laughs> and I've done some other project. I'm kind of running out of time, but so uh, several years ago, maybe four years, four years ago, yeah, <laughs> I made something called HTTP Status Cats, and that made me sort of internet famous for a little bit, like 15 minutes of fame, right? It was really popular, and now I even have a domain name. It's dot cat domain, right? HTTP dot cat. So. I did this a while ago, but now I decided to just make it as a Slack bot. <laughs> it's like a slash command. It's just a type in slash HTTP status. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested, um, please do install. And uh, I wrote a blog about it, too. So, <laughs> so I use a Node.js with ex Express to create this. It was quite easy to make, actually. It was my really weekend project. <laughs> And maybe in future, I want to do some other hardware project as well, maybe like selfie bot. But the thing is, maybe I have to train my cat to press button to take selfie, which I don't think it's going to work. Because you know, cats are always cats. They don't really do what we say humans say what to do. So it's not like dogs. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, thank you. Actually, I should say Dankeschön. <laughs> <laughs>